Welcome again to the online lecture series brought to you by the Tennessee Valley Authority. Today we will be discussing the subject of linear regression. Linear regression is a relatively straightforward topic that you may recognize over your years of doing lab assignments or basic algebra. This concept is simply taking a data set like the one plotted above that relates x and y variables. Then we take the scattered data and create a linear relationship. If you have done this in Excel, it's called adding a trend line. But in this lecture, we will learn how to develop the equation for this trend line. We do this with the use of variables and coefficients. For a simple linear regression, we start with the basic linear regression equation, which is the function of y conditional of x equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x, where y is the dependent variable or response variable, and x is the independent variable or regressor. So let's plot a random variable x here on the graph. If we take any random variable x, the corresponding value along the predicted line is the function of y conditional of x. Another coefficient, beta naught, represents the expected value of y when x equals 0. So, in other words, beta naught is the y-intercept of the regression line. Another coefficient, beta sub 1, represents the slope of the regression line. So we can rewrite this basic equation as y equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x plus epsilon, where epsilon is the random error term. We can also rewrite it as y hat equals beta naught plus beta 1 times x, where y hat is the predicted value of y for any given x. So the difference between y and y hat is that for any given x, y is the corresponding value based on the sample or data set. And y hat is the predicted value from the regression line. Now, at times, you will have to study multiple independent variables relating to a single variable. For example, you could relate the elevation of various cities to their average temperature. You can also relate the latitude of those cities to their temperature. In this case, each independent variable, or x, will have its own corresponding beta that represents the slope. So beta sub 1 through beta sub k are the change in y for a unit change in x. And the equation for those are shown here. Now, in order to develop the re linear regression equation, we have to select values for the coefficients like beta naught and beta 1 to minimize the difference between the actual and predicted values. In other words, 
we're trying to minimize the sum of the square of the difference between the actual and predicted values. The difference between y sub i and y hat sub i is the residual. And the residual is the amount of the actual value that's not accounted for in the predicted value. So when we look at the equations for the actual and predicted regression equations, what stands out as the difference? That's right, the random error term epsilon. So let's look at a very simple example that will help illustrate how to develop these coefficients. Here we have six values for x and y. We'll first calculate beta 1, which is the slope of the regression line. We use the equation s xy over s xx, where s xy is the sum of the products of the difference between the actual values and the mean values of x and y. And SXX is the sum of the squares of the difference between the actual value of x and the mean value of x. So first, we must calculate the mean x and the mean y. So the mean x is 3.5, and the mean y is 8.93. So then, we can calculate the sxy and sxx as it corresponds to each sample. So in this cell, we are taking the difference between 1 and 3.5, and multiplying it by the difference between 4 and 8.93 to get 12.33. We do this for each value in the sample. For SXX, in this cell, for example, we are taking the difference between 1 and 3.5 uh, and squaring it and we do that for each sample. We then take the sums of all the SXY and SXX to get 36.9 and 17.5. Now we can divide the final value of SXY by the value of SXX to get a beta 1 of 2.11. Now we can calculate the coefficient beta naught, and we do this by taking the difference of the mean y value and the product of the beta 1 that we just calculated and the mean x. So we fill in the variables and get a beta naught of 1.55. So now we have all the coefficients needed to develop a regression equation, which is 2.11 plus 1.55 times x. Now in order to determine how well a regression equation represents a data set, you use the coefficient of multiple determination, or r squared. In other words, how well does the equation we just came up with account for the variance of y values around the regression line? In a way, you can think of it like how we use standard deviation in statistics. So